A judge's ruling giving New York City schools a second chance at getting back some funds that were slashed when the city's budget was passed. Yeah, the unprecedented ruling comes after weeks of protests by teachers, parents, and principals over the crippling budget cuts. Teachers Union President Michael Mulgrew joins us this morning to discuss what exactly this means. Good morning, Michael. Thanks so much for being with us. Good morning. So just to remind our viewers, so the, the city budget cut $215 million from the Education Department because of declining student enrollment. So now the judge's ruling is putting the power back in the city council's hands and letting them re-vote on the education budget. So any word on when this vote is going to take place? We just hope it's as soon as possible. I mean, this is very frustrating, everyone. Uh, what we want to do is we've had years of turmoil. Uh, this was completely unnecessary on behalf of the mayor and the chancellor. Uh, we all understand that we have a lot of federal money, specifically earmarked for education, that has to be spent over the next two years. And you put on top of that that we're asking the schools now to do more than they've ever done uh, with helping the children, and you cut the budget? It made no sense. Uh, so there's over $4 billion of federal money that must be spent on education. What are we saving it for? Uh, so hopefully they get this done quickly because we want our schools to open as in a, a in a very orderly way and right now they can't do that. Mm. Well, the mayor's office is planning to appeal though, uh, the, the appeal the judge's ruling. Ha has that appeal even been filed yet? Um, uh, they just have said they're going to appeal, but that appeal they've already tried to get a stay and that was thrown out. Uh, they ruled against them uh, the city at that point. So if they're waiting for an appeal, that means we're going to open in complete turmoil in September. And that's the last thing we need right now. Mm -hmm. We want to bring some order and, you know, calm. We like our schools to be welcoming and everything to be orderly. And the teachers and the principals have been through so much, and they're going to deal with whatever they have to. But really, we need some leadership here, and let's get this thing settled right, and let's get our schools set up for September the right way. Yeah, the problem is the damage has pretty much been done, though. I mean, about 700 yep. teachers lost their jobs because of these cuts. So if there is a new budget, if it's passed, will there be enough time to rehire these teachers before school starts? That's why this is so. That's why this was so unnecessary. And really, should have never happened. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, it's gonna. It's going to be. Uh, it's gonna be chaotic. Uh, those teachers are in excess right now, so they're still uh, city employees. That's. But where are they going in September? Is really the question. So it's not. It's not the ideal way. This is the first school opening for this administration, and at this point, if I had to give them a grade, mm -hmm. I'd give them an F because this was completely a self-inflicted wound at this moment. What budget are the schools going to operate under until all of these legal issues are uh, resolved? Last year's budget, without uh, so that would bring them back to the f funding levels from last year. That's what the judge ruled. He says either you do another budget, uh, but no matter what, the schools are going to uh, ha at least have what they had last year. So how much communication? So that's where we're at. Yeah. So how much communication has actually gone between the UFT and the mayor's office, or or even the school's chancellor? I've been in, I've I've spoken to both of them in the last couple of days and I was very clear. I said we need to put order for our school opening. This is the worst thing that you could be doing. And they understand that the school funding formula that they're using right now is not appropriate because it doesn't take into account uh, basic uh, costs that every school has to have. And this chancellor has formed a committee to look at how to change that. Uh, and I'm just like enough already. The parents, the students, the staffs working in schools, it's been in turmoil for years because of COVID. Mm -hmm. We need to get this thing settled now. That's what the children deserve. And if you're asking schools to do more than they've ever had, which nobody's refuting, they are asking schools to do more than ever, uh, then really put them in a place to be successful at what you're asking them to do. And that's what they owe the children and the teachers and the principals of New York City. Well, Mike, you did mention uh, the $4 billion in federal funds that, that uh, the city has. Uh, but what's the problem with them tapping into it? Is there any likelihood that they would tap into that money? I mean, if they don't use it, they're gonna, we're going to lose it. You know, I hear from the Department of Ed that, oh, we already have that money accounted for. I'm like, where? You don't have any approved budget on any of that money. So that has to go before the city council or anyway. So I don't know what they're saving that money for. I, I know the money has to be used in education and I want it used now, part of it now, and part of it, let's have a long-term plan over really dealing with the effects of COVID that so many of our children 
you know, we, we have real learning loss and we're trying to get the, you know, we made up some ground last year, but we're going to be dealing with this for years. Yeah, well, so many people wishing for a very quick resolution. Michael mm -hmm. Mulgrew, thank you again for being with us this morning. Thank you and be well. All right, you too. Same to you.